Hello, my name is Gerard Winwright, and I'm introducing a series of videos I made to highlight the risks associated with unsafe swallow for people with profound and multiple learning disabilities. These were all produced as part of an award from the Queen's Nursing Institute and they're designed to be accessible for the families and carers of people with profound and multiple learning disabilities. In this video, we'll look at what is meant by health inequalities and why this is important for people with learning disabilities who have an unsafe swallow, sometimes called dysphagia. My name is Gerard Wainwright and I'm a learning disability nurse. In the video, I'm going to talk about health inequalities for people with learning disabilities and swallowing difficulties. By the end of the session, you'll be able to identify what is meant by health inequalities and why this is important when supporting people with learning disabilities. People with learning disabilities die, on average, 15 to 20 years sooner than the general population. Some of these deaths do not need to happen. In some cases, they can be prevented with good quality healthcare. This is a health inequality. Some of the deaths of people with learning disabilities are due to the person having swallowing difficulties. An unsafe swallow also known as dysphagia, is when someone has difficulty chewing and swallowing and can cause food to go down the wrong way. This can cause a chest infection and choking. It can make the person unwell and lead to aspiration pneumonia, weight loss and lots of other health problems. It can also cause stress for the person and their carers. Pneumonia or aspiration pneumonia accounts for over 40% of deaths in people with learning disabilities, according to the Learning Disability Mortality Review. The number of people who die due to aspiration pneumonia and pneumonia and don't have a learning disability is much lower. Many of the conditions causing aspiration pneumonia are treatable and in some cases can be prevented with the right care. If a person has a more severe learning disability, they may be at a bigger risk of having trouble swallowing. If you support people with high needs, you can expect to see higher risks. Prevention is better than cure, and in this training, we'll look at things that we can do as health and social care workers with the support of other health professionals to reduce the risk of an unsafe swallow and help keep people safe with learning disabilities. How do health inequalities impact on people with learning disabilities with an unsafe swallow? Often, the signs of an unsafe swallow are missed. This can mean that the person becomes unwell because they're finding it hard to eat and drink. Finding it hard to eat and drink may cause food and drink to go down the wrong way, which may cause chest infections, discomfort, weight loss and choking. If chest infections are serious, they can lead to aspiration pneumonia and will usually mean the person is very poorly and will need to go to hospital. They might need to have oxygen to help them breathe and to be given antibiotics for an injection or a drip. People can die from aspiration pneumonia. People can also die from other symptoms caused by an unsafe swallow, such as choking, losing weight and urine infections. Sometimes health professionals think that an unsafe swallow is due to a person having a learning disability. This is called diagnostic overshadowing. Some people with learning disabilities have difficulties accessing health services and appointments. This may be due to physical barriers such as buildings which are not designed for people who use wheelchairs. Or it can be due to information not being provided in a way a person with a learning disability will understand. Sometimes, people we support need reasonable adjustments to enable them to get the most out of health services and to attend health appointments. Without this, signs the person has an unsafe swallow can be missed. But there are things we can do to address these health inequalities. By having the right knowledge and skills to know how to identify if someone has swallowing difficulties, we can make an appointment for them to see their GP who can check their health. The person can also be referred to other health professionals who can help assess them, put things in place to reduce the risks of an unsafe swallow and help prevent swallowing difficulties 
leading to serious problems like aspiration pneumonia, choking, distress, weight loss and other things. This will be covered in more detail in the next video. By working together and ensuring we get the right help at the right time for the people we support with swallowing difficulties, we can reduce the risk to their health and support them to stay safe when eating and drinking. It's very important that people with learning disabilities are supported to attend their annual health check. Having an annual flu jab can also help reduce risks. You or someone in your workplace will need to complete a capacity assessment with your client. And if they don't have capacity to make a decision about a vaccination, to hold a best interest meeting with the relevant people. It's also important to keep accurate records of any changes in the person's eating patterns. Coughing when eating or drinking, any changes in the person's behaviour at mealtimes, or an increase in chest infections. If you have any concerns, you should contact your GP. You should now be able to identify what is meant by health inequalities, why swallowing difficulties are an example of a health inequality for people with learning disabilities, what is meant by reasonable adjustments, and why it is important to speak to the GP about any concerns. My name is Robert Cooper and I am a member of seven St Anne's Expert Voices and Experience Network. In this session I am going to talk about what is meant by an unsafe swallow. By the end of the session you will be able to identify what is meant by an unsafe swallow, sometimes called dysphagia. What happens when food, drink or segregations go down the wrong way. What is meant by aspiration the difference between aspiration and choking. An unsafe swallow, sometimes called dysphagia, is when food goes down the wrong way. This is caused by a physical difficulty in eating, drinking and swallowing. It can affect any part of the swallowing process. This means that it can affect a person's ability to hold food or drink in their mouth, chew food, move food or drink down into the throat, or move food or drink into the food pipe, sometimes called the esophagus, and down into the stomach. An unsafe swallow doesn't only affect eating and drinking, it also affects the ability to swallow medications, saliva, or segregations. We know from video 1 that people with learning disabilities are infected by an unsafe swallow more than other people, and that this can have a serious impact on their health and cause aspiration pneumonia. 50% of people with learning disabilities require support to eat and drink, and 8% of people known to learning disability services have an unsafe swallow. But the real number are probably much higher, as sometimes the signs of difficulties eating and drinking and swallowing are missed. An unsafe swallow can be caused by many health conditions such as cerebral palsy, dementia, stroke or getting older. When food or drink goes down the wrong way, in many cases a person can cough and clear the airway. When food or drink goes down the wrong way and a person cannot cough effectively to clear it, it can pass it to the airway and can then travel to the lungs and cause an infection. This is called aspiration. If the infection is serious, this can cause aspiration pneumonia. The infection can make it difficult for the person to breathe and make them very unwell. In video 3, we will look at signs to look out for that person has aspirated. 40% of people with a learning disability and an unsafe swallow experience recurring chest infection, which can cause aspiration pneumonia. Sometimes people confuse aspirating when food goes down the wrong way with choking. Choking is when food gets stuck in the windpipe and prevents the person from breathing. When a person aspirates, there is a not immediate risk to life. They will become ill gradually and they may occur hours or days after food going down the wrong way. If the person chokes, there is a immediate risk to life as they are unable to breathe. 
it is important to take immediate action. Always follow their choke on a risk assessment and seek immediate help by phoning 999 if required. Things that can affect the ability to eat and drink safely include poor posture, sitting in the wrong position, distractions when eating and drinking, needing help to eat and drink, need eating and drinking too quickly, putting too much food or drink in the mouth at once, or talking when eating and drinking. Eating and drinking difficulties can also result in choking, weight loss, distress for the person, their families and carers, urine infections and dehydration. Often an unsafe swallow can be managed and with support and changes, people can be helped to eat, drink and swallow safely. In video 5 we will look at working with other professionals to identify the difficulties, support the person and the people around them to manage those difficulties, minimise the risks and most importantly ensure that the person has a good quality of life. We shall now be able to identify what is meant by an unsafe swallow, sometimes called dysphagia, what happens when food, drink or circulations go down the wrong way, what is meant by aspiration, the difference between aspiration and choking. In this video, we will look at signs to be aware of that someone you support has an unsafe swallow, sometimes called dysphagia, and how to reduce the risk. By the end of the session, you will be able to identify how to spot signs that a person is at risk from an unsafe swallow or dysphagia, the importance of keeping accurate records, and other aspiration risks. Regular chest infections are one of the signs of an unsafe swallow. They can tell us that food has gone down the wrong way. They can be caused when something has entered the airway below the level of the voice box or larynx and gone on to the lungs. There are signs you can look out for if this happens when someone is eating and drinking. The person may cough and splutter and their voice may appear wet. There may be changes in the colour of their face, neck and chest. Their eyes may water and their breathing may change. If you think food or drink has gone down the wrong way, encourage the person to cough and allow time for them to recover before continuing with their food or drink. Other signs that a person has swallowing difficulties include The person might clear their throat, cough or choke before they swallow, while they're swallowing or shortly after they have swallowed. Shortness of breath when eating and drinking some people might have a sensation of food sticking in their throat. Frequent and repetitive swallows, for example, a person might need to swallow two or three times to clear one sip of water. Effortful swallowing, for example, people might find it hard to swallow or might pull a face or look uncomfortable when swallowing. Wet or gurgly voice, this can be caused by fluid or saliva sitting in the throat and not being swallowed. Unexplained weight loss, distress for the person, their family and carers, urine infections and dehydration. It's very important to keep accurate records of these signs. These will provide important evidence that you can share with the person's GP and other health professionals. Check if the person has a high temperature. If their temperature is over 39.4 Celsius, this is usually a sign of infection. If this happens, contact the GP or 999 in an emergency. Using an oximeter can give you important information about the person's oxygen levels in their blood. 94 to 99 is in normal range for an adult. If it is below this, speak to the person's GP. You can also keep a cough diary if the person is regularly coughing before, during or after eating and drinking. Weight charts are also important. If you're worried someone you support is losing weight, it is recommended you wear them on a weekly basis. When recording food diaries, it's important to keep an accurate record, not only of the food the person is offered, but also how much they have eaten. The same applies when recording what the person has to drink. 
By picking up on signs early, you're more likely to get the person the help they need and avoid them becoming unwell and needing to be admitted to hospital. As well as food or drink going down the wrong way, a person can also aspirate on saliva and secretions. It's very important to support people to keep their mouth clean by brushing their teeth and gums twice a day. This is especially important for people who have an unsafe swallow. The mouth produces bacteria. If we don't keep our mouths clean, the bacteria will grow and can be harmful. If a person swallows this and it goes down the wrong way, this could cause a more severe chest infection. The same applies if a person has dentures. These must be kept clean and their gums must be cleaned regularly. As well as the risk of things going down the wrong way, there are other ways a person can aspirate. For example, on acid reflux. Acid reflux, which is also known as heartburn, is when digested food or stomach acid blows back up the food pipe into the mouth. The main symptoms of acid reflux are a burning sensation in the chest, frequent throat clearing even when not eating and drinking, and an unpleasant sour taste in the mouth. If this happens, there is a risk the acid can then go back down the wrong way and go onto the lungs. If the acid goes onto the lungs, it may cause a very severe chest infection and burn the lungs, causing scarring. It's very important if you support someone you suspect has heartburn that they see a GP and if prescribed medication to treat it. They may be also advised to avoid certain foods. Acid reflux can be more common in people with cerebral palsy and can also cause risks in people who have their food, drink and medication via a peg, which will be covered in more detail in video 6. You should now be able to identify how to spot signs that a person is at risk from an unsafe swallow or dysphagia, the importance of keeping accurate records, other risks such as secretions and acid reflux. In this video, we'll look at how to manage an unsafe swallow and the importance of posture and positioning when supporting someone to eat and drink. By the end of this session, you'll be able to identify how to reduce risks for people with an unsafe swallow, sometimes called dysphagia, the importance of positioning and posture, the importance of providing the right support with eating and drinking, and to be aware of other professionals that can help. Videos 2 and 3 have looked at what happens when food goes down the wrong way and how to spot the signs that this is happening. This video will look at things that you can do to reduce the risk of an unsafe swallow or difficulties in eating, drinking and swallowing. It's very important to support the person's posture when they eat and drink. Always ensure they're sat as upright as possible and are sat in appropriate stable seating when eating and drinking. Whether the person eats sitting on a dining chair or in a wheelchair, the important thing is that they're supported to sit upright. Remember, the person's head, shoulders and hips should be in a line. If a person is very poorly and given food or drink in bed, they must be supported to sit up in bed, either by using pillows or if they have an automatic bed, setting the position so they can sit upright. Even people who are fed by a peg should be sat upright whilst they're eating or drinking directly into their stomach. This will be looked at in more detail in video 6. Check the person's care plan and find out if they have any physiotherapy advice regarding their positioning when eating and drinking. Poor positioning or posture can increase the risk of swallowing difficulties. Ensure that the person has the support that they need when they're eating and drinking. Check their care plan and find out if they already have advice from a speech and language therapist. If they do, ensure that this advice is always followed. Modified diets and thickened drinks will be looked at in video 5. As discussed in video 3, encourage and support the person to keep their mouth clean. This includes teeth brushing twice a day, and ensuring that the person's mouth is clear of food pieces after eating and drinking. Prompt the person you're supporting to eat and drink slowly. Have small mouthful 
and chew their food thoroughly before swallowing. Prompting the person to put their knife and fork down on the table between mouthfuls can also help with this. Reduce distractions when eating and drinking. This might include switching off the TV, removing unnecessary items from the table, or avoiding making conversation while the person is eating and drinking. Avoid eating and drinking when the person is tired or sleepy. Instead, try to have bigger meals when the person is most alert. If the person is having difficulty swallowing medications, contact their GP or pharmacy to find out if their medications can be prescribed in another form, such as liquid. Some people might also throw up clear and cough when they're not eating and drinking. This could be a sign that the person is struggling to manage their saliva or is experiencing reflux. As discussed in video 2 and 3, it's very important that the person with suspected swallowing difficulties sees their GP. The GP will refer them to a speech and language therapist if they have swallowing difficulties. Speech and language therapists support people with difficulties in eating, drinking and swallowing. Their role is to collect a detailed history about the person and their swallowing difficulties. Speech and language therapists will observe the person eating and drinking, usually over a meal time, and where possible, complete a detailed examination of the muscles that the person uses to eat, drink and swallow. Speech and language therapists may sometimes refer people for examinations of their swallowing. For example, a video fluoroscopy which is when someone has an x-ray while they are eating and drinking. Speech and language therapists will provide specialist advice about how to help the person to eat and drink and swallow safely. This might include modifying the texture of the person's food and drink, identifying what eating and drinking equipment that person should use, and advice on positioning an environment when eating and drinking. A dietitian can offer advice on nutrition if the person has lost weight. They will provide advice if the person takes their food via a peg. They can also give advice on food fortification and nutritional supplements. Physiotherapists can offer advice about positioning and postural care. If a person has difficulty sitting upright or has an altered body shape due to physical disability such as cerebral palsy, they can assess for specialist seating. Remember, the less a person moves around, the more at risk they are of fluid settling on their lungs and leading to infections. Physiotherapists can offer advice on chest exercises and postural drainage. All these professionals can also offer advice and specialist training to you in your role to help improve your knowledge and skills and help you provide the best support to a person with an unsafe swallow. It's very important to always follow the advice of other health professionals in reducing the risks associated with an unsafe swallow. You should now be able to identify how to reduce the risks for people with an unsafe swallow, sometimes called dysphagia, the importance of positioning and posture, how to provide the right support with eating and drinking, and other professionals that can help. My name is Jessica Longstaff and I am a speech and language therapist. By the end of this session you will be able to identify why some people you support require modified food and or thickened drinks and what modified food and thickened drinks are. Some people who have eating and drinking difficulties and or have an unsafe swallow benefit from having modified food or thickened drinks. However, this is not beneficial for everyone and it's important that we try other strategies, such as those discussed in video four, first. By modified food, we mean food that is a texture that is easier to chew and swallow. We may advise modified food for people who have poor dentition, physical difficulties chewing, people who eat very quickly and find it hard to chew thoroughly, and people who easily tire when eating. Thickened drinks are drinks that have been thickened using a thickening powder, such as Nutilis Clear or Thicken Easy. 
Thickening powder must be prescribed by a doctor and must be locked away with other medications. We only advise thickened drinks as a last resort. However, they can be helpful for people who have a slow swallow, as thickened drinks move slowly, allowing the person more time to swallow. It is very important that when preparing thickened drinks, you refer to the instructions on the tin to determine how much thickener the person needs per 200 ml of fluid. Remember that different brands of thickener have different instructions. As of 2019, the UK uses clear international descriptors for the different levels of modified food and thickened drinks. The organisation who created these descriptors is called the International Dysphagia Diet Standardisation Initiative, or IDSI. IDSI have a website and YouTube channel which anyone can access for useful videos and resources. IDSI descriptors were developed because prior to this, the names and descriptions given to modified food and thickened drinks were unclear and varied a lot. Having standardised international descriptors means that we are all using the same names and descriptors to identify what food consistency or level of thickened drinks a person should have, avoiding confusion. It is important that we all use the IDSI descriptors when talking about someone's modified food or thickened drinks. For example, if asked what kind of food does Bob have, we should use the appropriate descriptor, so Bob has a level 6 soft and bite-sized food. Avoid describing food as soft, as this is very vague and means different things to different people. Sadly, there have been many cases where a person has stated that someone has a soft diet and this has led to someone who usually has level 4 pureed food, for example, being given other food that is perceived to be soft, such as a sandwich, resulting in choking and unfortunately death. We will now talk about different levels of modified food. Level 7 regular food is food that is normal, of varying textures, and there are no restrictions on level 7 regular food. Level 7 easy to chew food is normal, everyday food that is naturally a soft, tender texture. It does not include foods that are hard, crunchy, chewy, stringy, fibrous, or foods that have crumbly bits, pips, seeds, husks, or bones. Level 6 soft and bite-sized food is food that can be easily mashed using a fork or spoon. A knife would not be needed to cut this food. It is soft and tender, but does require chewing, and pieces should be no bigger than one and a half centimetres. Level 5 minced and moist food is food that is soft and moist and can have pieces that are no bigger than 4mm and these pieces should be easy to squash with the tongue. It can be eaten with a fork or a spoon. The food should not be too sticky so it should easily slide off a spoon when the spoon is tilted upside down. However it could be shaped or moulded. This food requires minimal chewing. Level 4 pureed food is food that is pureed to a completely smooth consistency with no lumps. It should be thick enough that it could be shaped and moulded. It is usually eaten with a spoon but could be eaten with a fork. Again, it should not be too sticky. Level 4 pureed food requires no chewing. Level 3 liquidised food is food that is thinner than level 4 pureed food. It cannot be moulded or shaped as it wouldn't retain its shape on a plate. It can be eaten with a spoon or drunk from a cup, but could not be eaten with a fork as it would flow through the prongs of the fork. It is completely smooth with no lumps or bits. With both level 4 pureed and level 3 liquidised food, the food should be sieved to remove any lumps or bits. We'll now talk about the different levels of thickened drinks. Level 0 thin drinks are drinks that flow quickly and have no thickener in, for example water. Level 1 slightly thick drinks are thicker than water and require a little more effort to drink. Some drinks may naturally be a level 1 slightly thick consistency, for example some fresh juices. However, drinks like water would need thickener added to them to reach this consistency. Level 1 drinks can be drunk easily from a cup, straw or spoon. Level 2 mildly thick drinks are thicker than level 1 drinks. 
level 2 mildly thick drinks can be drunk from a spoon or cup, but they require some effort to be drunk from a standard straw. Level 3 moderately thick drinks are thicker than level 2 drinks. They can be drunk from a spoon or cup. They require moderate effort to drink through a standard straw. This is the same consistency as level 3 liquidised food. Finally, level 4 extremely thick drinks are thicker than level 3 drinks. They cannot be drunk from a cup or straw and are usually drunk from a spoon. This is the same consistency as level 4 pureed food. In this video, we will look at sporting people who have a peg and look at some of the swallowing risks. By the end of the session, you will be able to identify why some people are nil by mouth, what is meant by enteral feeding, and swallowing risks for people who are nil by mouth. For some people with high risks, an unsafe swallow means other long-term options, such as having a peg tube, so their food and drink can go directly into their stomach. A peg, or percutaneous endoscopic gastronomy, is a tube which allows the person to be fed directly into their stomach without the need to eat or drink through their mouth. This can reduce the risk of food going down the wrong way. The person can have the correct number of calories and nutrition given in this way. This will be agreed with the dietitian. Sometimes this is done using a pump which can be set to ensure that the person receives a certain amount of feed each hour. Other people have a bolus feed. This is when their feed is given in set amounts, usually via gravity, directly into the peg tube. A person with a peg can carry their feed and peg pump in a backpack, allowing them to continue to live independently. If a person uses a wheelchair, this can be attached to their chair. By slowing the amount of feed given per hour, any risks associated with acid reflux or regurgitation may be reduced. If a peg feed is given at a slower rate, at any given time there should be less feed in the stomach. So if the person regurgitates or vomits, only a smaller amount of undigested feed should come up. Some people with a peg can still have small tasters of food, but others will be nil by mouth. This decision will be made by the dietitian and speech and language therapist, alongside the person, their family and other key professionals, in line with the person's swallowing risk. It is very important to always follow the advice given. If a person can have tasters and food via their peg, the taste of foods or drink are usually in small amounts. There will be a care plan in place to support the person to have tasters safely. This will be in line with advice from the speech and language therapist or dietitian. The person will also have their drinks and medication via their peg tube to reduce swallowing risks. As people vary whether they are totally nil by mouth or can have some food or drink orally through their mouth, it's very important to always follow the advice which is in place in order to keep the person safe. To make sure that the person gets the right amount of food, to remain healthy and hydrated, this amount will be advised by the dietitian and will depend on the person's size and weight. What are the risks for the person who is nil by mouth? A person who is nil by mouth and takes all their food, drink and medication via a peg can still have swallowing risks. It's important to remember secretions such as saliva and mucus in the mouth can be swallowed leading to aspiration. As previously discussed, it's important that the person is supported to keep their mouth clean, even though they might not be eating and drinking. This is especially important if the person is not eating or drinking orally, as it will be harder for them to keep their mouth moist and clear of secretions. Some people with high aspiration risks may need a suction machine to help reduce the risk of secretions going down the wrong way. Some people will have advice from the physiotherapist about chest exercises or postural drainage to help clear the lungs. Positioning for people who have their food, drink and medication via their peg is very important. 
they should always be sat upright when having something through their peg. If the person is poorly and has their medication or a drink through their peg on their bed, they should always be sat upright with pillows or by using an automatic or profiling bed to sit them in an upright position. If someone has a peg fitted, they will need to have a break of 30 minutes from their last food, drink or medication by their peg before they are moved. For example, from their wheelchair to their bed if they require assistance. This time will be advised by a dietitian and may vary depending on their level of swallowing risk. Always check the person's care plan. Acid reflux, as we saw in video 4, can also put a person at risk of reflux going down the wrong way and going onto the lungs, causing an infection, even if the person doesn't eat or drink through their mouth. This is because the food can be regurgitated from the stomach and enter the mouth, with the risk it can be swallowed and go down the wrong way. Stomach acid can burn and if this happens, it can cause a very serious chest infection and damage to the lungs. You should now be able to identify why some people are nil by mouth, what is meant by enteral feeding, and swallowing risks for people who are nil by mouth.